My favorite times are when I'm about to upgrade my PC. When I do one Google search for one review of one new CPU one time, and then I'm constantly bombarded with PC ads. Every app you open, ad after ad after ad. Until I finally cave and buy a whole new PC. And now, my PC is awesome. Top of the line, I had issues with hangs, crashes, stuttering timelines at Premiere, slow navigation in Windows, but I read the reviews. I spent the money. My processor is blue now instead of red. My RAM has a five on it instead of a four. My PCI Express has more lanes than the PCH. And to illustrate how truly fast my top of the line bleeding edge PC is, I'm going to describe my CPU's capabilities in the short time it takes to add a text layer to Photoshop. At the heart of my PC is an Intel 13900K, the top of the line Intel processor. It has eight performance cores and 16 efficiency cores for a total of 32 processor threads that operate from three gigahertz to almost six gigahertz, resulting in hundreds of billions of instructions per second or 671 giga operations per second. Oh, I can do the hard drive too? Well, my hard drive is an NVMe SSD that reads and writes data at 6,000 megabytes per second. And it takes 23 seconds to type the phrase, kill me on an empty Photoshop document. <sighs> I'm done getting excited about hardware. Maybe I'm making too much much of this, but I'm impatient. So things like this bother me a lot. And I'm also neurotic, so in those 23 seconds, I mostly anguish about why it's taking so long. And that's on my Intel 13900K Windows PC. Clearly a hardware upgrade won't fix that. I tried adding a text layer to Photoshop on my MacBook Pro and it was instantaneous, like it should be. And the M1 processor is great, but it's not a desktop class beast that turns into a furnace at load like my 13900K. It doesn't even have a graphics card. How could a CPU that's clearly better perform worse. A lot of this angst is because now I have all the best hardware. My expectation used to be if I had the best CPU, it wouldn't be like this. But I've seen the top of the mountain, and I'm here to tell you at the top, oh, crap! there's just more mountain. Part of the issue is that video editing is about the hardest thing you can do with your PC besides play City Skylines 2. And that's all that I do. So the dragon I'm chasing with my hardware upgrades is a smooth editing experience. Also high res, high frame rate gaming and an OS that responds as fast as my brain. I wouldn't drool over new M3 chips from my MacBook Pro with a billion graphics cores, improved IPS on the next Ryzen processor, or breaking the six gigahertz barrier with the new i9 if I wasn't video editing. Because that's the main area where I have issues and think, if only I upgraded my hardware, it would be better. But no. The Adobe Premiere timeline, no matter how much I upgrade my hardware, hates me and wants me to be mad. Adobe is a vampire that lives on my frustration and the $50 a month it's been draining out of my bank account for a decade. I wouldn't be surprised if Intel and AMD paid them to not optimize to make me think I need to upgrade my CPU every cycle. It's a stuttery mess, especially towards the end of making a video. I'm probably screaming at my computer right now as I edit this. Is 32 gigabytes of RAM not enough? How many giga operations per second does it take to put a drawing of a box on top of a drawing of another box? Hey, 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 calm down. You're gonna be all right. You can hear me? This is too weird. Oh, um, that's cool. I'm just gonna. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We're gonna. I just. Yeah. I'm just cool. yeah. Computer. Cool. Um, I mean, yeah. Lisa Frank came like that. In the last decade, I've gone from an Intel 6700K to a Threadripper 1950X to a Ryzen 9 3900X to an Intel 13900K, and every time I upgrade, it feels faster for like a minute, partially because I need it to so I don't get depressed, but also because every time I upgrade, I do a clean install of Windows. And every time it's the same story. Export times are better in Premiere, but the timeline still sucks. The biggest jump in performance I ever saw was not when I upgraded my CPU, but when they added GPU support to video encoding. I was exporting videos in 30 seconds rather than five minutes, which is why I'm learning to temper my excitement when I hear about how small the number of nanometers is on the newest silicon, because the hardware is there. It's the software that needs to catch up. Which is not to say that hardware upgrades never have any utility. There were a few times where my computer got noticeably faster with an upgrade, when Macs upgraded PowerPC to Intel, and then again when they upgraded from Intel to M1. The other time my computer got noticeably faster was when the PC market shifted from platter hard drives to solid state drives. All right, I'm gonna hedge just a little. Obviously, if your CPU is like five years old, you'll probably see a speed increase, but only if your software is optimized to a point where it can take advantage of the speed increase. At this point, the only thing that would sell me on a CPU upgrade is more power efficiency. My PC is literally a furnace. I played City Skylines 2 last night and I couldn't even touch the top of my computer. That's a 13900K for you. And upgrading to an M1 on my MacBook Pro had some really nice quality of life improvements. In addition to just being able to open a Premiere project with 4K video, it also had ridiculously long battery life and being able to open the computer to an instant login screen. And speaking of hardware, the M1 MacBook Pros added back features we had been missing, like an HDMI port, an SD card slot, and took out the awful touch bar. 
At this point, other hardware components make a much better upgrade than the CPU. Like the graphics card! If you're gaming, I tend to try to stick to upgrading every other generation, praying there's not another shortage. When I upgraded from a GeForce 1070 to a 3080 Ti, I saw massive improvements. I was able to game in 4K. I could try ray tracing, see 30 frames per second, and then turn it off. One reason I'd get a 50 series card is because goddammit I hope by then ray tracing doesn't kneecap frame rates. So with graphics cards, hardware is king. But at the same time, I just saw this article today. 92%? 750%? Wait, what about Nvidia? For years, my top of the line Nvidia graphics cards would suddenly bug out and turn the screen off and on and off and on for seconds to minutes, making me have to restart the computer. Then one day, after years of trying to figure out what I had to do to make it stop, thinking different motherboard manufacturers would help, it stopped. Turns out they had to do something about it. Take everyone working at Intel, squeezing more transistors into a chiplet, and get them to debug the freaking GeForce drivers. Disband AMD and send them to Microsoft's Quality Assurance Department so that my computer doesn't take 10 seconds to open a folder. By the way, I made a video about the software solution to that horrible problem. Check it out. And we see this all the time, most recently with City Skylines 2. Unoptimized, it runs like garbage. Optimized, it will presumably run better. Cyberpunk 2077, same thing. The fact that DaVinci Resolve plays back 4K video easily and Adobe Premiere can't on the same exact computer further shows this to be true. One of Tim Apple's constant talking points is the tight integration between hardware and software on Macs. Probably too tight. Macs are famous for not letting the user just do whatever they want, but that also means their drivers are constantly being optimized for the limited hardware configurations available. If you want to make an app for Mac, you have to follow Apple's rules. Windows XP ran exponentially better than Windows 98, even on the same CPU. Why? because they completely rewrote the OS using their NT kernel instead of their ancient DOS-based Windows 9X software. Then there's iOS, an operating system that was built from scratch in 2007 with no backwards compatibility to worry about at all. There's nothing more stable and fast than iOS. It famously uses a fraction of the memory of other mobile devices because it's so well optimized. My main driver, pun intended, for CPU upgrades has been Adobe. And I'm freshly upset at them because on both my PC and my M1 MacBook Pro, once I get enough effects and B-roll and music on there to make a watchable YouTube video, it chugs. No amount of hardware horsepower is going to change that. And they don't optimize because speed doesn't sell. Features sell, hardware sells. There's no money in making a program that you've already bought faster. So I'm doing my part. And since I started writing this video, I'm trying to edit in DaVinci Resolve. It's free. And it's so clear that this is a video editor like iOS was an operating system. They programmed it recently. They started fresh. Their backend is based in the GPU, not the CPU. They separate tasks into different workspaces so they can allocate resources better. From the ground up, it's modern. What I've learned after all this is that Premiere will never have a smooth timeline experience unless they stop adding new features for two years and take all of that time to either optimize it or totally redo the entire backend. I'll tell you what I'm doing about it. I'm editing this on DaVinci Resolve. Use the power of my money to tell Adobe that their software sucks. So don't upgrade your CPU, unless it's like five years old probably. Upgrading your GPU is another story. You'll definitely see frame rate improvements. And by God, if you're not using a solid state drive by now, do yourself a favor and get one. It's like a whole new computer. So after all that, just don't think hardware is going to save you. It's the software.